Hi there, this is Al24 News Live from Algiers coming up next in our news program. Scientists in South Africa are studying a recently identified new coronavirus variant of concern, stoking fears the country may face a potentially severe fourth wave that could spread internationally. Plus. The last deadly tragedy which the Franco-English Channel witnessed raised concern in both countries and led the two governments to talk over the solution for diminishing the crossings which are repeatedly taking human lives. And finally, a strong and shallow earthquake of magnitude 6 struck the Myanmar-India border region early today, Friday. Hello again and welcome. First in our top stories, scientists in South Africa are studying a recently identified new corona variant of concern stoking fears the country may face a potentially severe fourth wave that could spread internationally, Sid Islam reports. South Africa has documented around 2.95 million cases of COVID-19 since the outbreak began, with more than 89,000 deaths. South African experts, on the other hand, have voiced great worry about a novel COVID-19 mutation that has been found in limited quantities and are attempting to comprehend its possible ramifications. According to the same experts, the variety known as B11529 contains a quite odd constellation of mutations that are troubling because they may enable it to dodge the body's immune response and making it more transmissible. And this variant has been detected spreading mostly among young individuals. The NICD said in a statement on Thursday that discovered cases and the proportion of those testing positive were growing rapidly in three provinces, including Gauteng, which encompasses Johannesburg and Pretoria, the capital. According to Health Minister Joe Pala, the variation of a severe concern and is responsible for the exponential spike in recorded cases, making it a significant threat. The new variety, as said by Tolio de Oliveira, the director of the Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation in South Africa, who includes a constellation of novel mutations, which was a worry for projected immune evasion and transmissibility. More than 30 mutations in the spike protein which influences transmissibility were discovered. The United Kingdom imposed travel bans on six African nations, including South Africa, on Thursday. UHAL Secretary Sajid Javid, on his behalf, declared that the immunizations against the new variation may be less efficient, and the latter may be more transmissible than the Delta type. Protesters in French overseas territories in the Caribbean opposing measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 clashed again with security forces as the Paris government vowed to restore order. Hardline opponents of measures that include compulsory vaccination of health workers on the islands of Guadalupe and Martinique burned tires while on Martinique police were targeted by gunfire. Let's follow this report. Violent unrest has erupted in Martinique and neighboring Guadeloupe in the previous week amid the government's imposition of stricter measures to prevent the pandemic spread. France Info published footage of protesters attacking a shopping center and escaping with goods, as well as images of demonstrators erecting roadblocks with blazing barricades. In Martinique, where a general strike began on Monday, security forces and firefighters have reported coming under fire a week after a similar strike began in Guadeloupe. Mandatory vaccination has stoked long-standing resentments in regions, but where poverty levels are significantly greater than on the mainland. Authorities on the Caribbean island of Martinique ordered a curfew on Thursday after protesters looted shops and set up burning barricades as demonstrations against COVID-19 protocols spread across France's overseas territories. A new wave of coronavirus infections is spreading across the Caribbean islands, where vaccination rates in France's overseas territories are far lower than the mainland. That has led to prolonged and tougher COVID restrictions, resulting in unrest. The unrest comes at a crucial time in France's rule of its overseas territories as the Pacific region of New Caledonia prepares to vote on independence in a third and final referendum later this month. 
to Europe and in response to the outbreak of COVID-19 infections, restrictions are increasing. The Netherlands closed bars and supermarkets from 8 p.m. and Austria announced that it will confine the unvaccinated. The current increase in the number of infections is driven by five countries, which alone account for more than 50 percent of new weekly cases. Let's follow this report. The European Commission is rather undisturbed in the face of this new wave of COVID-19. Brussels has slightly increased its GDP growth forecast this year to 5% and expansion will continue next year with a forecast of 4.3%. The European economy has recovered extremely well after last year's historic recession caused by the pandemic and despite the current wave, it should resist well. In particular, France experienced one of the strongest growths in the euro area with a forecast of 6.5% of GDP growth this year. Today, European countries are relying on vaccination and while 75% of the European adult population is vaccinated, the regional disparities are significant, especially in Bulgaria and Romania, the least vaccinated countries in Europe. In Hungary, the Prime Minister Viktor Orban ordered a partial lockdown to restrain the contamination. In the UK, where the post-pandemic economic recovery is already slowing down, household consumption is struggling to take off, and the government may not wait until a new wave arrives to accelerate its vaccination policy to avoid new preventive measures. If the restrictions come back, as is already the case in some European countries, there is a risk that certain phenomena will occur, such as the shortage of raw material, as it will affect European countries, as well as the United States and China. The European Commission is concerned that labor shortages in some sectors will persist, particularly in sectors where the economic rebound is strongest. This could have the effect of increasing wages to attract more candidates and thus cause inflation that is frightening economists. French fishermen stated they will block entry to the English Channel port today, Friday, in northern France in protest over post-Brexit fishing rights. France and the UK have been at odds over the interpretation of the Brexit deal for years. The last deadly tragedy which the Franco-English Channel witnessed raised concern in both countries and led the two governments to talk over the solution for diminishing the crossings which are repeatedly taking human lives. Ayadi Usama. One of the deadliest migrant tragedies was witnessed in the Franco-English Naval Channel as 27 people died after their boat flipped in the water while attempting to cross the channel from France to the UK. The channel in the busiest naval lane in the world has been an easy road for migrants for a long time. According to statistics, more than a thousand refugees reached southern England in recent days, and some 22,000 migrants have made the cross in this year. In reaction to the smuggling across the channel, French Interior Minister announced that five people who had connections with the shipwreck were arrested. On the British part, the Home Secretary Priti Patel announced that she made a very clear offer to her French counterpart and a step to reduce channel crossing. Information is still being gathered about the situation in France as this becomes more and more clearer. The Prime Minister chaired the emergency COBRA meeting last night and then spoke to the President of France. In a phone call, Patel explained that UK personnel is ready to undertake joint patrols on French beaches to prevent small boat crossings. Boris Johnson on his part proposed the five-point plan for finding radical solutions to migrant issues, which concerns both countries. The persuading some of our partners, uh, particularly the French, to, to, to do things in, in, in a way that we think is uh, the situation deserves. But what we want now is uh, to do more. The plan requires to use more advanced technologies such as radar and sensors, in addition to deepening the work of joint intelligence. The plan requires to use more advanced technologies such as radar and sensors in addition to deepening the work of joint intelligence. UK government officials and law enforcement are preparing to head to France for talks that they hope would do a lot for the shared crisis in the channel. Again, and with the migrant problem, which has intensified since migrants are suffering from cold, as they try to pass Poland's borders, the latter has threatened to put penalties on Belarus, which has been accused by the UN of causing a humanitarian disaster across the two nations' frontiers. Islam Seed on this report. Tensions have been reduced in recent days as Belarus has transferred some migrants away from the border. 
However, hundreds of people remain stuck in freezing camps. Several migrants have already died while trying to cross. Poland has threatened Belarus with more economic penalties, as well as the closure of its border to all freight and railway traffic. Furthermore, the European Union accuses Belarus of causing humanitarian calamity by ferrying people to the border in retribution for EU sanctions imposed following a disputed election last year. The Polish Prime Minister said that Europe was ready to step up its response to what he called a political crisis provoked by Belarus, which was using innocent people as human shields. On Tuesday, the EU said it was creating emergency legislative remedies for migrant asylum and return proceedings. Must be able to respond effectively. The European Commission's chair, Ursula von der Leyen, declared that the Belarus border problem is an attempt to weaken the EU. According to Human Rights Watch study based on interviews with hundreds of refugees, Belarusian troops breached the barbed wire barrier to let migrants get into Poland, where they are often picked up by Polish border police. Poland denies that it has broken any asylum laws. Belarus alleges that its border guards have misused their power as well. As said by accounts, one of the most recent casualties of this crisis was a newborn child who was miscarried by his Iraqi mother as the family crossed the frontier. According to the Russian authorities, at least 52 people were killed and 46 people are still trapped inside a coal mine in Siberia in a new disaster in a sector often witnessing similar accidents in Russia. Hazan Russian authorities announced that 52 have died while dozens are trapped or missing inside a mine in Siberia due to a fire and smoking rising. Russian media confirmed the injury of 45 others while firefighting units managed to evacuate 237 workers from the Lisvyayanya mine in the city of Gramotino. The governor of Kimarov region, Sergei Tsvila, visited the victims of the mine accident at the Kuzbas Clinical Center for Miners and asked to examine the conditions of internal organs of all patients and take care of them. I asked to examine the condition of internal organs of all patients. There was an explosion, the blast wave was very strong. So we don't know if the internal organs were damaged. We have all been through this before, when the next day and the day after signs of injuries appeared. And that's why we need a detailed examination of each patient, regardless of their current stamina. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that the President Vladimir Putin expressed his deepest condolences to the families of the victims and hopes people trapped underground will be rescued. Russian prosecutors filed a lawsuit with the court to shut down the country's oldest human rights group, Memorial, accusing them of violating foreign agent law terms along with ex uh, or promoting extremism. Memorial's voices defending human rights violations may not be heard again here, as Russian court threatens to shut it down. The Russian rights group was founded in 1989 and came into light with a campaign for new freedoms and human rights in the Soviet era and modern-day Russia. Memorial aims to preserve the historical memory of the victims of Soviet Union repressions and to expose modern Russia's human rights violations. In November 2015, the Memorial Human Rights Center was added to Russia's foreign agents list. Through lists of political prisoners, the group has established iconic indicators of rights situation documenting historical and present injustices. Today, the organization is confronting accusations from prosecutors who said that Memorial should be shut down for violating one of the foreign agent law terms for taking foreign funds besides promoting extremism in Russia. According to Russian Nobel Peace laureates, these attempts to close the memorial have raised fear and alarm. Memorial refutes both accusations but insists that it's trying to respect the foreign agent law, including paying passport ordered fines with public donations money. The case was postponed until December 14th, following arguments from both sides in court. Still with Russia, where President Vladimir Putin told European Council President Charles Michel that he was concerned about Kyiv's provocation to inflame tensions in eastern Ukraine. The Kremlin mentioned the Russian president expressed worry over the Ukrainian side's continued provocations aimed at worsening the situation on the line of contact. 
The phone call came as the Western governments voiced their displeasure with the human rights situation. Russian military activities near Ukraine, with the US expressing serious concerns about the new army build up on the border. Russia has dismissed rising Western claims that is planning an operation of the Ukraine accusing NATO of provocations. After Russia took the Crimean region in 2014, the Ukrainian army has been involved in the festering battle with Kremlin backed separatists in the Donetsk and Lugansk areas. Ukraine and its Western allies have accused Russia of crossing the border with troops of munitions, but Moscow has denied the allegations. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Chinese Minister of National Defense Wei Fang inked a roadmap to strengthen cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region through strategic exercises and joint patrols in a virtual meeting. Chinese State Councilor and Minister of National Defense Wai Feng He and Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu pledged on Tuesday to safeguard international and regional stability. During a video call, the two defense ministers said that China and Russia will continue to deepen strategic cooperation between the two militaries and bolster cooperation in strategic exercise, joint patrol, and other areas. This virtual meeting comes two days after Putin stated that relations with China are reaching their highest in history, noting that the center of gravity of the world's politics and economy steadily shift from the Euro-Atlantic to the Asia-Pacific. We will continue strengthening ties with our good neighbors and friends in the People's Republic of China. Our bilateral ties have now reached the highest level in history and amount to a comprehensive strategic partnership. It is possible to say that they are a model for effective interstate cooperation in the 21st century. Naturally, this is not the liking of everyone. We have repeatedly noted the center of gravity of the world's politics and economy steadily shift from the Euro-Atlantic to the Asia-Pacific. For China, Russia is the largest supplier of its weapons and the second largest source of its oil imports. And for Russia, China is its largest trading partner and a major source of investment in energy projects, including the Amal LNG plants in the Arctic circles and the power of Serbia pipeline, a $55 billion gas project that is the largest in Russia's history. The deepening of ties between China and Russia is unprecedented and comes at a time of escalating tensions with the West. Australia's defense minister said there is a significant disconnect between what China says and what it does. And according to him, China's alarming actions do not match its rhetoric about promoting peace and prosperity in the region after a Chinese Navy ship was tracked sailing through the country's exclusive economic zone. Czech President Milos Zeman has immediately returned to the hospital after testing positive for COVID-19. The president's office confirmed that Zeman would return to the military university hospital in Prague. The 77-year-old had earlier been discharged after spending more than six weeks in care and had planned to recover at his presidential residence in Leni Castle. But his spokesperson person confirmed that Zeman had tested positive for coronavirus after arriving at the castle. Opposition forces in the Peruvian parliament, including the party of right-wing candidate Keiru Fujimori, who lost in the last presidential election, submitted a bill to impeach left-wing head of state Pedro Castillo. The document, signed by 28 lawmakers, talks about the lack of moral authority for President Castillo to rule the country. And according to the Euro Mediterranean Seismological Center, a strong and shallow earthquake of magnitude 6 struck the Myanmar India border region early today, Friday. According to the alert by the independent organization and provider of real time earthquake information, the quake struck 174 kilometers east of Bangladesh, Qigong, and the tremor were felt as far away as in West Bengal, Tripura, and Assam in eastern India. And we wrap up our news edition with some sports news in this report. After years of silence, the French court reopens the case of Karim Benzema and Mathieu Valbuena. The president of the French Football Federation felt that justice had been too late in doing its job to render a judgment.
He said, I support him, he doesn't deserve it. This case should have been dealt with much earlier. There are bigger cases that are dealt with in six months. Benzema shows that he has gotten back in shape, and I'm not just talking about football. But in daily life too, he's well known in French team, well known in Madrid, and more importantly, he's well respected by his coach Didi Dichon. And now it's time to have a reminder of our main top stories. Scientists in South Africa are studying a recently identified new coronavirus variant of concern, stoking fears the country may face a potentially severe fourth wave that could spread internationally. The last deadly tragedy which the Franco-English Channel witnessed raised concerns in both countries and led the two governments to talk over the solution for diminishing the crossings, which are repeatedly taking human lives. A strong and shallow earthquake of magnitude 6 struck the Myanmar-India border region early today, Friday. That's all for me and the rest of the team. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.